All right, energized and ready to seize the day. If this is something that you want out of your day to day, just put the word yes in the chat box. If you want to start your day energized and ready to seize the day, give me a yes. Yeah, I think we can all agree. This sounds like a dream. Um, if you want to end your days feeling relaxed and content, uh, just put the word content in the chat box. If you want to end your days feeling relaxed, ready to get some good sleep, feeling content, feeling refreshed. I mean, that sounds amazing too, right? Uh, purposeful and prepared. Yeah, content and wine. Chuck, love that. <laughs> um, if you want to start your workday, step into your workday feeling purposeful and prepared. Just put the word purpose in the chat box and let me know. Stepping into your workday purposeful and prepared. You know what's ahead. You, you're in the right mindset and you're ready to rev up and get ready to go. And then how about the end of the workday? You know, how much, like scale of one to 10, scale of one to 10, how much would you like to step into your evening hours, just feeling more present with your family, with your friends and feeling less distracted? Scale of one to 10, how, you know, how, how much do you want that? <laughs> um, you know, feeling like you're not worried about work, like you, 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 you found your stopping point, you know, what you have on in, you know, on tap for the next day, and you're able to just be there and be present. I love that, that 100 and that 11. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I feel like that's one of our biggest challenges as professionals, especially while uh, so many of us are in a remote or a hybrid working environment is feeling present and not distracted in the evenings when it's our not work time. And then finally, who wants to step into their week, step into their week feeling calm, confident, and intentional, knowing you've got a plan for, for your week and what's up ahead. Put the word plan in the chat box if that sounds amazing or intentional, that works too. Um, calm, confident, intentional. You've got a plan for the week. Um, just put the word plan in the chat box and, and let me know because um, stepping into your week, feeling calm, confident, and intentional, intentional, like, you know, what you're doing, what you've got on tap, when you're doing it, how you're going to do it. And you, you, you're going to make it happen. You're feeling great. You're feeling calm, confident, and intentional. Well, you know what? This might be no surprise because this is the topic of office hours today is that the way that you can achieve the way that you can feel all of those feelings is with routines, is with routines. You know, so often we, we look to um, hacks or what, what planner can I buy or what tool can I use or, you know, what, what can I do in order to create this feeling of feeling prepared, feeling on top of everything, being focused on work when we need to focus and being focused on family and friends when we want to focus on family and friends. And y'all, the secret is in solid routines. And so that's exactly what we'll be talking about today. And just to give a 101 style definition of routines, Routines is simply defined as a sequence, a sequence of actions regularly followed, a sequence of actions regularly followed. Pretty simple. So um, out of curiosity, were any of you uh, able to join for the last office hours that was all about habits? If you were there, just put the word habit in the chat box and let me know. Um, because, okay, yeah, Lulu was, Veronica was there um, last week or last office hours. We really dove deep into habits, including the anatomy of a habit, how, why habits are so amazing at combating decision fatigue. So I won't recap all of that today, but I do think that it's really important that we talk a little bit about the difference between habits and routines before we totally jump off and start talking about routines. Does that sound good? All right. Habits versus routines. So when we think about habits, habits 
are defined as an action that is repeated in a regular way. So it's an action. Um, it's one, one action. Um, and habits typically take place with little or no conscious thought. We just kind of do them without thinking, which is the beauty of habits, which is why they're so amazing at combating decision fatigue, which is that feeling where we're drained because we've made so many decisions in the course of a day that our decision-making power starts to tank. So habits are amazing. But the difference between habits and routines is that routines, which are a regular way of doing things in a particular order, routines require a higher degree of intention or effort. Um, and that's just to say that while, you know, last week we talked about how you can design a habit by being aware of the three major parts of a habit, the cue, routine, and the reward, um, designing a routine takes a little bit more work. But the results and the outcomes of having routines in place can give you that feeling of stepping into your day, feeling prepared, stepping into your week, feeling intentional, starting your work day, feeling on fire and ready to go, ending your work day, feeling complete, like you can step away. And I know that many of you have joined for office hours before, and I'm so thrilled just to welcome you back. But in case we haven't met yet, before we dive in too much deeper, I just want to introduce myself. So my name is Anna Dearman Cornick, and I am the head of community at Clockwise. And I think it always helps to understand a little bit about where presenters are coming from. I'm always curious, like, wait, how exactly did you get to where you are? And how are you, how do you know all these things about routines? Um, so to give you that background, I actually kicked off my career as a congressional scheduler, managing one of the most hectic schedules in the entire country, uh, you could say. And some days it felt like I was spending 10 to 12 hours in front of a, an Outlook calendar, moving meetings around, fielding hundreds of requests for my boss's time. And so time management is something that became a part of my life and my career very early on. But I'm a Louisiana girl coming to you from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where we are known for our amazing Louisiana cuisine. And I really started to miss home. Um, turns out you can't get Louisiana delicacies like boiled crawfish or etouffee or um, jambalaya and uh, shrimp creole whenever you want in DC. So I moved back home. And out of curiosity, where are you guys coming from today? Let me know in the chat box where you are joining from. I'm coming, I'm coming to you from Baton Rouge. So I decided to move back to Louisiana uh, to be closer to home, and that's when I kicked off a 10-year career in the 24-7 uh, world of crisis communications and government affairs. Every day was a crisis to be managed and chaos to be uh, in order to be made out of chaos. Um, you name it, oil spills, tornadoes, droughts, hurricanes, floods. Uh, nonprofit embezzlement schemes, universities on the brink of collapse, you name it. And I've probably escorted someone down a back freight elevator into a side alley in order to escape TV cameras um, and reporters with microphones waiting outside. I mean, every day was some kind of adventure. Uh, but as you can imagine, after a while, that 24-7, always-on, crisis-oriented lifestyle can really take a toll on a person. And uh, my boundaries were non-existent. My health was not in a good place. My relationships were crumbling. And I knew that after one too many days spent um, crying in the stairwell on the way to my windowless office that something had to give, something had to change. And so I walked away in search of something better and in search of something different. And so now um, I'm a time management coach uh, and I'm on a mission to help others make time for what matters as head of community at Clockwise. And so that means that today I am here to be your time management coach. And we're here to, to deep dive into time management and productivity topics and answer your questions so you can walk away feeling ready to take on anything, feeling calm and prepared. And so today we're going to do that by diving into the five essential routines for a sustainable work week. Uh, sure, there are a lot of different routines that you can create and implement, but we're going to focus on the five that pack the most punch and will give you the most ROI in terms of uh, feeling calm, prepared, and confident in your days.
So we've already talked about some of the benefits of routines, you know, that feeling of being calm and prepared, you know, not to mention um, having routines in place that enable you to get a solid seven to nine hours of sleep per night, which is the recommended amount of sleep that adults should have each night. Um, it has immense health benefits, uh, being able to be more present with your family and your friends in the evenings when you're not meant to be engaged in work. Uh, it's really hard to put a price on being present. Am I right? So we've already talked about a lot of the benefits of routines. So we're going to dive straight into what those five essential routines are. I'm going to share for each of them uh, some common pitfalls and some helpful tips and then we're going to dive into a step-by-step -step method to design routines that work. We're not just going to say, I'm going to start this routine and then start it. No, we're going to be intentional about designing our routines. Because remember, when we talked about the difference between habits and routines, routines require more effort and intentionality in order to make them happen, in order to make them ingrained. So let's dive in to the five essential routines. And those are a morning routine, an evening routine, a workday startup routine, a workday shutdown routine, and a weekly planning session. So I would love to know, um, and you can let me know with a one, two, three, four, or five, how many of these routines are you familiar with? Are you familiar with two of them? Maybe you've heard of three of them. Um, let me know. Maybe, maybe you're a routine rock star and you've heard of all five. I would love to know, you know, how many of these routines have you heard of or are you familiar with? Um, with a one, two, three, four, or five. Okay, so we've got a three, two, three, four. Okay, we've got a really good. Okay, so Rachel's heard of three of them. Okay, Veronica is a three, Irene's a two. Awesome. So we've got a really good mix. Oh, Rachel, how many do I do? One. I'd love to know out of curiosity, which is the one that you really stick to? Um, let us know if, if you're comfortable, but I would love to know. Um, how many do you do? Yeah. Okay. So we've got a really good mix uh, where everyone has some familiarity with at least two of the routines on this list. So we're now going to dive in into each one of these five essential routines and uh, talk about common pitfalls as well as helpful tips for getting these routines set up. And oh, Rachel, I love that. That's such a great way to, to automate and have that reminder for you uh, so that you're ready to go. All right, so we're going to start with morning routine. You know, this is the top of our day. And our morning routine is really meant to help us wake up, get going, and get where we need to be. Whether that means uh, getting yourself ready and out the door, whether that means getting family members up, <laughs> out the door, to school perhaps, um, whether your commute is to an office right now, or whether your commute is to a kitchen table or a home office. Your morning routine really sets the stage for the day ahead, but morning routines, there's a little bit more uh, to morning routines than meets the eye. Um, and one of the most common pitfalls of a morning routine is trying to do too much. Trying to pack too much into a morning routine, not having enough time to do it all, and then starting your day feeling a bit like a failure because you either weren't able to get everything done or you felt rushed or you tried to pack so much into your morning routine that you forgot something. And so a helpful tip for having a solid morning routine, and we'll get into the step-by-steps of designing one in just a bit, but a helpful tip for having a morning routine that really works for you is to know yourself, to know yourself and to be realistic. Um, I would love to know who in who with us today is a morning person. If you are a morning person, put morning person in the chat box and let me know. I'm just going to let you know, I am not a morning person. I do not wake up and, you know, sing 
to the birds outside. I don't know, whatever morning people do. I am just not a morning person. I would love to be a morning person. Um, but my natural biological leaning is just not meant to be a morning person. And, um, spoiler alert next, next office hours, we're going to dive in into, uh, being a morning person or an evening person and how your energy levels affect your day. So uh, more on that later, but I'm just really excited about it. But most helpful tip for designing a morning routine that actually sticks and works for you is to know yourself. And if you know that you're a morning person, that means that, you know, maybe you can uh, be a little bit more generous with what you decide to schedule in your morning routine. And if you know that you're not a morning routine, then maybe you need to create an evening routine that really supports the way that you are in the morning. And so helpful tip for morning routines is to be realistic. So the next routine of the five essential routines that we're going to cover today is your evening routine. Now, sometimes this is called a nighttime routine or a bedtime routine, but the context of the evening routine for this, for this set of routines is that this is the, the wind down routine that helps you prepare for seven to nine hours of sleep a night, okay? So studies have shown that the ideal amount of sleep for adults is seven to nine hours, you know, on average, you might be closer to seven, you might be closer to nine, but that seven to nine hour um, window, that seven to nine hours of sleep is what really enables our bodies to do that regenerative work uh, while we're sleeping, that enables our bodies to, 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 go to work in, in the healing processes that take place while we're sleeping so that uh, we're able to have strong immune systems so that we're able to uh, start the following day with the energy that we need to, uh, to, to go to work, to, to do life. And so a, an evening routine, a quality evening routine is one that helps you gradually wind down to a place of relaxation so that you can get good sleep. Um, very often, uh, and, and I can be guilty of this as well, but very often one of the biggest pitfalls that we experience with an evening routine is that we get lost in the scroll. We get lost in our phones or we uh, lose track of time with a Netflix or a, a Hulu binge or just a TV binge uh, in general. And the next thing we know, um, it, we're, we're exhausted, but also kind of wired. And then we just head straight to bed. And then we, we don't have that. We, we have a bit of a restless night's sleep. We don't get that good quality sleep. And so an evening routine is one that, um, that you repeat on a daily basis that, you know, kicks off at a specific time that takes you through the process of winding down in order to prepare for a solid night's sleep. And one helpful tip for uh, having an evening routine that you stick to is to set a wind down alarm. Uh, out of curiosity, does anyone have a wind down alarm or uh, maybe your phone or your watch has a notification that uh, encourages you to start the wind down process? I recently, um, I have an Apple Watch. Recently on my Apple Watch, uh, there's a there's a setting that you can create that will send you a notification whenever it's time to start winding down. Oh, Sophie has. Okay, so Sophie shared um, that she has a, a setting at 10 p.m. so she can go to bed at 11. So that's a really helpful tip is to set that wind down alarm that, um, oh yeah, okay, so Stacy messaged and says, I do, but I've learned to ignore the alarm. I know, right, it's easy to just keep going past it. And so um, that might be something that you can create a habit tracker for is every time you don't ignore the alarm, Stacy, and you actually follow through with your uh, evening routine that you get to put an X on the habit tracker. Um, so that, that can be a lot of fun, uh, cause I love, a, I love a good habit tracker. And so, like I said, a helpful tip is to set a wind down alarm. And if you're thinking, okay, so what time should I set my wind down alarm for? Um, we'll talk about that in just a bit when we start designing routines with intention. Um, but you, you know, I, I I find that a common pitfall with all routines in general is that we don't necessarily have a plan for them. And so whenever you have that wind down routine, that wind down alarm that goes off, that's like, okay, time to start getting ready for bed. We don't really have a set process um, 
ready to go. So we're just like, whatever, I'll just get in bed at some point. And so um, a helpful tip is to set a wind down alarm and actually stick to it. Okay, so the next two routines are two of my favorites, and I think that uh, these have the potential to be game changers. Um, I know that uh, a, a workday a work startup routine is something that um, you may or may not have heard of. So I would love to know, you know, you said earlier, one, two, three, four, five, how many of you have heard of uh, the routines as a whole? But I'd love to know, just put the word start in the chat box if you have heard of a workday startup routine. Put the word start in the chat box and let me know. So a workday startup routine is basically a short sequence of events, short being the keyword, that help you rev up and get into a workday mindset, a workday mindset. So this is something that takes you from um, not work brain to work brain. It, it also has the potential to serve as a bit of a commute for my remote workers um, who, are, who are not yet traveling from home to the office as, as maybe you once were. So a workday startup routine is a short sequence of events that signals to your brain that it is time to start the workday. Um, one common, well, actually, I'll say a few examples of what you might want to include in a workday startup routine. Um, it's as simple as opening your laptop, um, clicking over to your task management system. Let's say you use Asana, so it could be opening your laptop, opening Asana, um, making sure that you have a full glass of water or a fresh cup of coffee. Um, maybe you um, I don't know, meditate for one minute and then you start working. <laughs> um, so it's really meant to be a sequence of events that signals to your brain that it's time to start working. Um, kind of helps you, especially if you have hectic mornings, uh, you, maybe you have um, kids that you're helping to get ready or you have a lot of pets that you're taking care of. Uh, having this really helps you step into the workday with that feeling of being purposeful and prepared. Um, one common pitfall of that is um, frequently associated with workday startup routines that I, I've seen with a lot of my uh, past time management coaching clients is trying to do too much during a workday startup routine. Um, I'll, I'll have someone tell me, okay, so my workday startup routine, I'm going to open my laptop and I'm going to open my Asana and I'm going to open my email and I'm going to reply to all of my unread emails. And then I'm going to write a 47 point to do list. And then I'm going to send five Slack messages. And then I'm going to um, do this and this and this. And I'm going to write three thank you notes. And they, they, they make this big list of things that they plan to do as their workday startup routine. But then what happens is that before their day, before their workday has even begun, they already feel like they're being dragged down by, by too much to do. So a helpful tip for creating a workday startup routine is to remember that this is not meant to be um, an admin block. Uh, what, you know, one thing you may want to include in your daily startup routine is choosing your top three priorities for the day, but it's not meant to be an intensive planning block. It is meant to be a short sequence of events that help you uh, transition into the workday. So again, uh, some examples could be opening your laptop, opening your project management system, making sure you have a full cup of coffee or a full glass of water, and then go. And so on the flip side, the uh, bookend to the workday startup is called the workday shutdown, the workday shutdown. So this is the opposite of the workday startup. And the purpose of the workday shutdown is meant to close the loops in your brain and prepare to be present in your off hours. So this is one of my favorite routines um, and one that is very, very impactful because, you know, especially while so many of us are working remotely or working with, with a hybrid arrangement, um, the lines between work and home are so very blurred and having a workday shutdown routine in place creates a physical 
a physical um, sequence of events that create a mental shift, a mental mindset shift. So uh, one of my favorite examples here is Mr. Rogers, and you might have heard me give this example before, but uh, Mr. Rogers from Mr. Rogers Neighborhood that you might remember, um, at the beginning of every episode of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, he would walk into his home, he would come in from the outside, he would walk into his home, he would take off his outside jacket, and he would hang it up in the closet and put on a cardigan. And he would take off his outside shoes and he would put on inside shoes. And so this, what Mr. Rogers was doing was he was engaging in a physical sequence of events that created a mental shift from outside mode to inside mode, engaging with his friends in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. And so that's essentially what a workday startup and a workday shutdown routine do for you. Again, I know I probably sound like a broken record, but it is a sequence, a short sequence of events that creates a, a mental mindset shift. Um, you know, one of the most common pitfalls associated with a workday shutdown routine is that you don't start them early enough. So Ideally, you're going to start a workday shutdown routine, say like 15, maybe 10 minutes before you intend to end your day. So this requires you to do a few things. Um, it means that you need to have a set time that you're going to stop working. Uh, I know a lot of us right now, because we're working remotely, because we're working from home, uh, that urge and that temptation to keep working into the evening is very real. It's very strong. I mean, if you feel that, just let me know with the word, you know, real, that it, like, put the word real in the chat box that, you know, it, it that, that urge is very real to want to work past normal working hours. And so you've got to decide, okay, what is my stop time? I, I've talked before about Parkinson's law, work expands to fill the time allotted. Work expands to fill the time allotted. And unless we give ourselves a set stop time, we could literally just keep working ourselves into exhaustion because there's always something else that could be done, something else that could be edited, tweaked, adjusted, reviewed, changed, swap a color, change the text, um, there's always something that can be done. Uh, you know, we are never truly going to reach the bottom of our to-do lists because things are always going to be added on top. And so in order to have a successful workday shutdown routine, you have to have a stop time. And so once you've got that stop time, putting on your calendar a reminder that 10, 15 minutes before that you start that workday shutdown routine, that's going to enable you to not only close the tabs on your browser, which out of curiosity, do I have any, any friends in, in here today that like have like 47 tabs open at all times. If you're a big fan of all the tabs, put the word tabs in the chat box and let me know. Like you've always got like a thousand tabs open at any moment. Um, so, so here's the thing. Here's what I want you to know about tabs. I love tabs. They're great. Uh, but anytime we leave tabs open, um, <laughs> anytime we leave tabs open on our browser, they're always refreshing in the background right? They're refreshing in the background. Um, they're searching for new information. Leaving tabs open on our laptop also causes us to leave tabs open in our mind, okay? So when we have tabs open in our mind, we are constantly refreshing and reminding ourselves and thinking through things. And we're asking ourselves, did we do this? What's the status of this? Oh, I need to update the Smith report. I need to talk to, to Joseph about XYZ. I need to check in. We're, we're continuing to cycle through everything in our heads. And so during your shutdown routine, this is your opportunity to close the loops. This is your opportunity to close those open loops and end your workday feeling complete. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you've done every single thing on your to-do list, because again, that's, that's usually kind of impossible. You know, we, we will never, most of the time, never get to the bottom of our insanely long to-do list, but it gives you the feeling of being complete because you've made the decision about what enough 
is. And you've made the decision about what finished feels like. So instead of looking at the clock and thinking, oh my gosh, it's 537, I've got to go and just getting up and having all the tabs still open and having everything just unfinished, whenever you get up like that in a rush, you haven't properly turned yourself off. You haven't turned your work brain off. And so doing this workday shutdown routine enables you to turn your work brain off, or at least put it in sleep mode so that you can be present. And like the door to my office is right here. So I'm thinking about my family. So it enables you to be present when you are not meant to be working. So workday shutdown can be an absolute game changer. But the helpful tip for implementing a workday shutdown routine is to keep it simple. Again, if you put too many things on your workday shutdown routine list, you're not going to do them and you're not going to get those positive benefits of feeling complete and stepping away. I like to say, put it on a sticky note. You should be able to fit your startup routine and your shutdown routine on the same sticky note and put it where you can see it um, near your workstation. So I've talked a lot about a workday shutdown routine being a game changer, but it's not even the best routine. We're about to talk about the best routine on the, out of the five. Yeah, Chuck, you can put all five of them. You can put, you can put both your workday startup and your workday shutdown on the same sticky. Now, I don't know how big you typically write, but that, that clues you in to how short um, these are meant to be so that you stick to them and that they feel more like a routine that gets you revved up or wound down instead of like thing you have to slog through. So number five, the weekly planning session, sometimes called a weekly review or a weekly preview. Um, this is something that uh, a lot of productivity leaders in uh, workplace thought leaders talk about is having a weekly planning session. Um, I believe it's called a weekly review in the getting things done method. Some people call it a weekly preview. I like to call it a weekly planning session because that's what it is. I used all caps for this one because I cannot underscore enough. A weekly planning session is the single most important thing you can do each week. The single most important thing that you can do each week. This is a big deal. A weekly planning session is your bird's eye view of the week ahead. Doing a weekly planning session enables you to combat overwhelm, catch communication breakdowns before they happen. They enable you to set boundaries and decide how, when, and what you plan to do things. They give you an opportunity to identify obstacles before they happen so you can go ahead and start ideating solutions. And a weekly planning session enables you to get a game plan for the week ahead. Now, I want to know um, if you use a weekly planning session, if you currently do a weekly planning session, or if you think based on the amazingness of this, that you will start a weekly planning session, just put the word um, weekly in the chat box and let me know. Because if there is one routine you implement, I encourage you to make it the weekly planning session. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive on the weekly planning session because it is so important. Um, and first of all, oh yeah, so Sophie sent a message and says uh, weekly, it's the best thing you've started doing in the last six months. It really is a game changer. So one common pitfall, pit, pitfall. so Lauren, that's a great question. So a daily planning session is fantastic. Um, a daily planning session gives you the opportunity to get that bird's eye view of your day. But when you do a weekly planning session, you're able to look at the week as a whole and make decisions ahead of time. Um, in addition to planning out your time blocks for the week ahead and getting an understanding of what your capacity looks like, what you, you're able to, um, to identify to understand, you know, what meetings need additional preparation, what days are especially like right here uh, to uh, identify obstacles, what days are especially difficult, because if on a let's say on a Sunday or a Monday morning, you do a weekly planning session, and you identify that, oh, wow, I have two late meetings on Thursday, 
Um, I'm probably not going to want to cook dinner that night. So let me go ahead and decide now that that's going to be takeout or let me plan to do a crock pot meal or something easy on that, that day in order to, um, to make that, that day easy. So that's where a weekly planning session really comes into play is that it helps you, um, really get that survey of the landscape and see, okay, what are the potential obstacles this week and how can I get ahead of them now? Because sometimes when you wait until the day of, it's too late and you're scrambling and you find yourself feeling flustered. And so uh, that's how a weekly planning session can really come into play. If you have a, a partner or a spouse and you coordinate things like, um, daycare drop-off or school extracurricular um, carpools or things like that, you're able to say, oh, wow, I have six back-to-back -back meetings on Tuesday. Uh, would you be able to, to, to handle carpool that day? Or you can make arrangements that are kind of difficult to do the day of. And so I'm thinking a lot in terms of not just our work life, but our entire, um, our entire life as, as people, because you know, while our work life does take up what, like a one, one third of our time, um, you know, we've got everything else to think about as well. So one of the biggest um, pitfalls that we can have about a weekly planning session is not having a plan for planning. So we sit down and we say, okay, I'm going to do a weekly planning session. Let's go. And then we sit there and we're like, wait, what am I doing? What am I planning? What, what do I need to do this? And so helpful tips for a successful weekly planning session. Um, first, create an agenda. I know we typically think of agendas as being something that we use in meetings with others, but having a weekly planning session is, you know, or if the definition of a routine is doing a sequence of events, a sequence of activities in a regular repeatable way, it's creating a step-by-step -step list of everything that you will plan during your weekly planning session. It's like planning to plan. So maybe it's, okay, first I'm going to uh, look, I'm going to open my work calendar and look at the week ahead. Second, I am going to create time blocks to ensure I have enough time available for my most important needle moving projects. Then I'm going to assess any tough spots in the week in order to identify where I need to ask for help to delegate things or call in backup. Uh, maybe you need additional childcare. Maybe you need to coordinate um, something external. Um, then once you identify those, top, those tough spots, that's a great opportunity to do meal planning. Uh, once you do meal planning, that's a great opportunity to make a grocery order or a grocery list. Uh, at that point, you can survey uh, your budgets associated with uh, work projects. You can uh, assess your personal finance, your personal finances to make sure that you are hitting your personal finance goals. You can um, plan your workouts for the week. You can, there are so many different things that you can do that are going to be unique to you during your weekly planning session that are going to set you up for success in the week ahead. And so once you've made your agenda, you've got your plan for what you're going to plan. The next thing that is so helpful is knowing what tools you need to do your weekly planning session. Because, you know, whether you do your work, your weekly planning session in your home office area, at your kitchen table, uh, at a cafe, um, one of the biggest things that can derail a productive week weekly planning session is realizing, oh, I don't have my planner or, oh, I don't have my spouse's work schedule or, oh, I'm doing a, uh, a, a fitness and meal plan, but I forgot the meal plan. Uh, I forgot the, the menu, you know, whatever it is, you know, if, if you don't have everything that you need, you're not going to have a productive session. So after you make your agenda, make a list of the tools that you need to make it happen. Third, pro, third tip uh, for a, a productive weekly planning session is to actually schedule it in your calendar. And to take it even further, one pro tip is to uh, schedule it in your calendar, but make it a flexible meeting using Clockwise. You know, it, it's true that the way that our schedules work is that it's very difficult to say, okay, every single Monday at this time, I am committed to doing my weekly planning session. You know, things change. Um, sometimes we need to alter our schedules a bit, but we don't want to lose that time that we've committed to. So you can actually make, uh, you can create a, a 
meeting with yourself, a hold on your calendar. You can make it a flexible meeting with Clockwise and you can give it those parameters that, you know, I want to do a weekly planning session at some point um, between the hours of nine and 11 on Monday morning. And it'll move for you so that you don't lose that key time, but that you have the flexibility to take on other meetings if needed. And then finally decide how you'll make it fun because doing a weekly planning session, I, you know, it's incredibly important because of the so many benefits it has to helping you step into your week, feeling calm, prepared, and intentional, but it can feel like work when you're just getting started before you start to feel those intrinsic benefits of doing the weekly planning session. So I encourage you to find a way to make it fun, whether that's um, getting a fancy coffee or listening to fun music, or maybe you Zoom with a friend while you both do your weekly planning sessions, just find a way to make it fun. So a couple other routines that are great that uh, I, I don't consider to be in the five essential, but are really helpful uh, would be like one example is a virtual commute, something like going on a quick walk to represent the time that you used to spend commuting, maybe not the full time, but just something that gives you that, um, that, that commute feeling in order to decompress at the end of your day. Uh, batching specific workflows is another example of a routine that you can create that can also be very helpful, such as creating a marketing Monday routine or a finance Friday routine, where say every single Friday, you uh, follow the same exact step-by-step -step list of, you know, checking your bank accounts and uh, paying bills and reviewing budgets and moving money to savings, et cetera. Uh, another routine is something that you could call home mode, where after you finish your workday, after you do your workday shutdown routine, uh, what are the first things that you do once you enter home mode, kind of like Mr. Rogers would uh, put on his cardigan and his comfy shoes. And then finally, evening prep. If you're like me and you're not a morning person, you know, what are those things that you can do in the evening that aren't necessarily that evening routine that set you up for a good night's sleep, but they set you up for a successful day tomorrow. So with the time that we have left, we're going to talk about how to design routines in a way that you will actually stick to them. So the first thing that we do in order to design a successful routine is we make a list of the things that we must do. So this is gonna be more common in a morning routine or an evening routine. So let's think in terms of a, of a morning routine for this example. Make a list of the things that you must do during your morning routine. Um, does that look like you must get your kids up? You must give them breakfast. You must walk the dog. You must brush your teeth. You must take a shower. What are those things that you must do in order to start your day? And be honest with yourself, not everything is a must do. So really start by making a list of what are the things that you must do. Next, you know, make a separate list of the things that you want to do in the mornings um, in, or the evenings. So let's say um, maybe you want to work out in the mornings, you want to meditate in the mornings, you want to um, you know, call a friend in the mornings, you know, whatever it is, what are those things that you want to do in the mornings or in the evenings to set yourself up for a good night's sleep? In the evenings, do you want to stretch before bed? Do you want to do deep breathing? Do you want to uh, do some meditation to really wind down? So what are those things that you want to do and separate those out? So you've got your must do list and your want to list. So next, the next thing that we're going to do to be realistic and set ourselves up for success is we're going to estimate how much time um, each, each item in our morning routine will take us. You know, you take those, those must do's and you take those want to's and you start thinking through, okay, what is the order that I want to do things in? Like making yourself a line by line itinerary. And I know this seems like work, but this is how you, you're able to be very realistic and make these routines stick. Um, make that list, you know, what order do I want to do everything in and how much time is each section going to take me? You know, how, how long do I want to meditate in the mornings? Uh, how much time do I reasonably spend in the shower? Um, really thinking about the, the true time it takes to live these routines. 
And keep in mind that it's always better to overestimate how much time something takes versus underestimating. Uh, you, you may have heard me before talk about the planning fallacy, which basically means that we're all pretty terrible at estimating how much time things take. We get overly optimistic. And so I would encourage you that as you're creating the times, um, it's better to overestimate and then correct than it is to underestimate. So then we're going to reverse engineer, you know, what time do you have to finish your morning routine in order to start your work day? What time do you have to get the kids to school in order to, um, to make sure that they're not late? Uh, what time do you want to be in bed in order to know what time that you should start your evening routine and what time you should set your wind down alarm for? Um, so really, it's, again, deciding what that end time is. Same thing with a workday startup routine and a workday shutdown. Um, what time do you want to end your workday so you know what time to start your routine? And then we're going to make it realistic. So after you made your list of things that you want to do and things that you must do, and you estimated the times and you reverse engineered, you might realize that you need to wake up at 4 a.m. in order to do every single thing on your morning routine list. And you're like, no, I, I can't do all this. This is impossible. I'm not going to wake up at 4 a.m. And so now we adjust. We adjust and we make it realistic. Um, because again, if you have an evening routine that requires you to start at 7 p.m. in order to, to make it to bed on time, you're probably gonna wanna make some adjustments and be more realistic. So once you've made adjustments, I encourage you to uh, print out your routines and post them where you can see them. I already mentioned that posting your startup and shutdown routines on a post-it note in your workspace will make you more likely to keep it short and follow through with each step. Um, and, but when you post it where you can see it, you're more likely to follow each step as you're training yourself, uh, to, 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 for it to become second nature, as you're bringing it from, um, a routine into more of a habit that you don't have to think about as much. And I know some of you got, some of you are dropping off. So I just want to thank you so much for coming. And then the last piece is, um, practice or well, the almost it's practice, you know, once you've made your list of want to's, your must do's, you've estimated your times, you've figured out your end times, you've reverse engineered, uh, you've made adjustments so that it's realistic, you've posted it where you can see it. Now we're going to practice, we're going to put it into motion, and we're actually going to do the thing. We're going to go through the step by step. Because as you're going through the step by step, this is what uh, this is where you're going to adjust your times. You're going to adjust how long things take you. You're going to realize, oh, wow, I actually spend 15 minutes in the shower instead of 10, or it actually takes me, you know, 10 minutes instead. So, um, oh, yeah, pop in and out of a frame with glass, put the printed routine behind it and check off with a wet erase pen. I love that, Rachel. Thank you so much for sharing that tip. And so after you've practiced it, we're going to go back to adjust. Uh, we're going to make it realistic. And you're really going to continue to practice and adjust, practice and adjust until you have developed routines that really feel second nature. So, all right. We've covered a lot today. We've talked about the benefits of routines. We've really did a deep dive into the five different essential routines that can help you win your week every week and have a sustainable work week. One that enables you to step into your week feeling calm, prepared, and ready for anything. Finish your work days feeling complete uh, and ready to be present in your non-work hours. And we've walked through a step-by-step -step method for designing routines that you'll actually stick to. Um, I know that we're running short on time, but if you have any questions, please feel free to pop those in the chat. I also want to make sure, like, if, if, if you have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and cover action items real quick. And it's simple. Your action items are to, I encourage you to share your biggest takeaway. Um, use the hashtag clockwise office hours. Would love to know. And then I encourage you to take action on at least one thing that you've learned today, whether that's implementing a startup routine or it's making your agenda for your first weekly planning session. Choose one thing and implement that.
And then finally, I encourage you to register for the next Clockwise Office Hours, which is going to be all about how to harness your energy to design a more sustainable work week. Um, ups and downs, how to harness your energy to plan a more sustainable work week. You know, one minute you're feeling energized, the next you just want to take a nap under your desk. And so we'll dive into how you can be intentional about planning your day based on your energy peaks and valleys. So I'm going to pop over to the questions now. So Lauren says, for me, I've always looked for a task management tool to help with these things, but I end up creating a bunch of tasks at the onset and then never follow through with checking back on my task list. How would you recommend working past this? Would this be something I could add to a morning routine to check and update my task list? Lauren, I think that's a really great, I think that's a really great idea. Um, so one of the things in my morning startup routine actually involves uh, checking the day's agendas and updating agendas for the day, uh, making sure that um, I start my day doing this download of, okay, what are the meetings I have? Do I have prep time for those meetings? Uh, and what updates do I need to make to the agendas in order to be sure that everything is set up? And, you know, I think that that's great. Something That's something that you could actually do partially to a shutdown routine and a startup routine. So let's say that you end your day and part of your shutdown routine involves assessing the day past, uh, what is still outstanding, what needs to be completed and what needs to be done tomorrow and creating tomorrow's list before you walk away. Because when you create tomorrow's list before you walk away, um, you, you've signal to your brain that the day is complete and that even though the tasks themselves might not be complete, you've reached a true stopping point. And so you're able to start the next day with your task list already set. Um, is that something that you think could work for you? Because I mean, I would love to know if that if that fits, because whenever you um, end your day by making tomorrow's to do list, you're creating the signal that it's complete and it's uh, you're able to start the day feeling more ready to go and prepared. Um, any recommendation if after your work day, you still do personal things on your laptop? Oh, that that's actually a really great um you know, thing that so many of us are, are, are doing right now. We're using our work laptops um, to tackle personal things. I do that too. Um, and so I actually don't, in that case, what I'll typically do, what I would recommend is you, you finish your work for the day, you tackle those personal things, um, and then um, do the shutdown routine and then, and then walk away. So I typically incorporate those personal things, almost like the last piece of the work day and then do the shutdown and walk away. This is basically, um, and this is a case in which, you know, I know that a lot of us, uh, will we'll have our laptops out. Like we'll be sitting on the sofa. We'll have our laptops out. We'll do like some shopping. Um, so that that's different. Like that's just kind of you know, casual internet browsing. Uh, maybe you're like reading articles, maybe you're doing personal things. Um, and it, it just really depends. You know, if, if you want to have your laptop put away, I would say, do your work things, do your personal things, and then do your shutdown. But if your the personal things you're doing on your laptop are more like casual browsing and looking around and checking out Facebook, then you could do your work things, do your work shutdown, and then go to your you know, personal browsing. Uh, does that make sense? Let me know if that, if I'm hitting the nail right there. And then for, oh, you, so you said, would you recommend to take a break, like going for a walk or do something around the house before going back to the laptop? Yeah. So it would just really depend. Um, I don't, I don't think you, you necessarily have to, like, you'll know yourself if you need to create that separation, but it really depends on what the personal things are. Um, like I said, so if you're doing like casual browsing, that's not at your desk, then you, you, you know, can just pull it out later. But if you're doing things that um, say you're doing like maybe an online course or you're doing education or something like that, then you may want to wait and do your shutdown routine after. So um, there are a number of different ways that you can do it. And, you know, everything's an experiment. Everything is an experiment and you can test out different methods and see what works for you. So any more questions? We're at a little at one minute after two o'clock. I'm here if you have any additional questions. Um, yeah, Sophie, thank you so much for joining. Thank all of you for being here to carve out this time for yourself. Um, it's always such an honor to be here and to be your coach. And I look forward to seeing you on February 16th for the next office hours.
Thank you so much. Let me see if I can uh, add the link. Let's see. Did that work? Yeah, so you should be able to go right there to register for office hours. And as you're leaving, you should uh, get a, a thank you page that will let you register right there. So I would love to see you in two weeks where we'll be talking all about how to harness your energy to uh, to really make the most of your days. We're talking like 10 x in your productivity, doing your most important work at the best time for you. So I look forward to seeing you then. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Go make time for what matters. <laughs>